In February of this year, the chief editor for the Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology, referred to as the Green Journal, it's like the, it's one of the most respected journals for obstetrics and gynecologists in the United States. There was an editorial written by Dr. Alt where he addressed the problem of vulvodynia or sexual or pain in the genitalia. But I want you to notice what he calls this, this problem. And, and by the way, the reason he's commenting on this article, which came out in February of this year, is that there was an article published showing that somewhere around 1 in 20 20-year-olds 20 have this problem. And he calls it an agonizing disease. And the reason it's, and not only is it agonizing, if you look at his, this other reference up here, he's talking about women who have pain in the genitalia, sometimes with sex, sometimes not with sex. It's like having a severe migraine in the vagina. It can be a horrific pain. And of course it can interfere with, with relationships when this part of the body associated with intimacy has pain. But I want you to look at, at the, the way he talks about it. He says, there are a few randomized trials, there's, that mu there's not that much research about it, and he says, uh, he talks about very low sexual desire. He also says that vulvodynia causes major disruption in our patients' lives, from mundane activities such as wearing a favorite pair of jeans, to important and pleasurable aspects like intimacy. But he says, vulvodynia and related pain is poorly understood, poorly recognized, and poorly treated. So imagine have, being a 20-year-old woman. This is very, very true, poorly recognized. That means she gets shuffled from doctor to doctor getting treated for urinary infections, psychological problems, named all sorts of things, and all sorts of treatment when she's so it's, and then once it's figured out what she actually have, it's poorly treated. We, this is like the king of gastro, of obstetrics and gynecologists in the United States. And he's freely telling you, we don't understand it. We often don't even recognize it when it walks in our office with a sign. And once we figure out what it is, we don't treat it well. And then if you look at this research that's come out in this article, it's still not even about treating it. It's just counting heads. It's counting the number of women who happen to be suffering. So let's take a look at that. Here's the paper he's referring to. And if you look at the numbers on this paper, it's very, very bothersome. If you look at 20-year-olds, this is the number as cases per 100 years. So this is an epidemiological study. So if you watch 10 women for 10 years, that would be 100, I mean, 10 women for 10 years, the total would be 100 patient years. Or you could wa watch 100 women for one year. So, but anyway, so if you just watch women that are 20 years old, somewhere around 8 out of 100 of them, I mean, think about that. That's close to 10% are going to have this problem. Where in 60-year-olds, it's less than half as many. So this is not just a problem of older women. This is a problem of young women who are trying to start their lives or trying to have intimate relationships or making families. And so this is a, as he called it, an agonizing problem psychologically and physically. And often they walk around, don't even know they have it. They don't even, they're not even diagnosed. So that's the problem. And why has it not been solved? Partly because you know, the things that have been tried are just because we don't understand it. There are things like pain medicines. There's psychological medicine. Numbing cream. Who wants to put lidocaine on the vagina before you have sex? But if that's the only way you can do it without pain, then that's what some women have to do. So, you know, they go through all this suffering and, and then they're still left without a good solution. And it can be, just as he put it, you know, this is the most recognized expert probably in the U.S. He calls it an agonizing disease. Psychologically and phys physically, it is agonizing. Well, you know, I don't claim to have the solution for all the women who are suffering with this problem, but there is something new, and it's called platelet-rich plasma. And let me just show you. If you just go to PubMed, which is sort of a search engine for that a lot of people recognize, is put is published by the NIH. 
and you look at just platelet-rich plasma, platelet-rich plasma is not new. You know, there are thousands, there's 10,000 research papers about platelet-rich plasma. So if someone tells me they haven't read anything, they re read about the O-shot, and they said there's no research to back that up, they might be reading Batman or something, but they're not reading the medical literature because there's 10,000 articles about platelet-rich plasma. There's over 20 companies making kits to prepare platelet-rich plasma, but unfortunately it's mostly been looked at the plastics by the plastic surgeons, the oral surgeons, the dentists, the derma, the, um, some of the, um, uh, the veterinarians use it in high-priced racehorses, the NFL use it to keep their athletes going. Well, why shouldn't that same technology be looked at at how to maybe rejuvenate tissue that for some reason is not well? And you don't have to always know a problem or the etiology to know how to make something better. Sometimes we don't even really understand all the reasons why some of our most favorite medicines work, but we know that they work. And here you have a material that is known to rejuvenate pluripotent stem cells basically the genetic code to rejuvenate healthier tissue. I don't necessarily have to know how that code works to know that it, it will create tissue based on that genetic code. And that's what all these 10,000 research papers are about, how to do that in such a way that you heal damaged or injured or poorly functioning tissue. And if you look at the, the anatomy of this, and this is just from the Facebook page about the O-Shot, which you may want to go check out, but if you look at that and you look at the picture of the way the vagina is put together, you can see there are parts of it that are not visible, like the inner part of the clitoris, this whole area between the vagina and the urethra where there's tissue there that's very thin and sensitive and with scarring either from, from childbirth or maybe atrophy from uh, aging. You can see how this tissue next to a very sensitive part like the urethra or around lots of nerve fibers like the clitoris, if it, something was scarred or not functioning properly, it may cause pain. There's a lot of nerve fibers down there. So basically what the O-Shot is, is a way of taking this plasma that's been researched so much and using it as a way to generate or to rejuvenate that tissue. Now platelet-rich plasma has been used to treat scar tissue and for wound care. If you look up here, just look wound care or wound healing. You can see there's a lot in the literature. There's 400 or so research papers about wound healing and how it might help tissue rejuvenate. We're using it in the vampire facelift, which is another procedure that uses that same material. And, and using that, we can rejuvenate the face and we can help with scar tissue uh, rejuvenation and remodeling. So basically what I'm saying is that if you or someone you know might, is suffering with this agonizing disease, you might consider trying a, a, a solution. If you go to oshot.info, you can see uh, videos about it. You can research, see the supporting literature about it, research about it. You can see a blog where people are talking about it. And then if that looks like something that might benefit you, then there, there's a place there to find the closest physician where you just click on find provider and it gives you a list of all the doctors there that may be of help to you. And I think we're up to about five different countries. I can't remember. Yeah, somewhere around five countries and almost every state in the union. So anyway, that's what the O-Shot is about. And I think it's springtime here when things are, um, when people are thinking about love and intimacy, I think it's a good time to pass the word about the O-Shot.